Cool. Hello, Pierre. Hi. Welcome to Walk Their Shoes. Thank you very much. Uh, this podcast where we interview, uh, I think, interesting life stories, mm-hmm. uh, maybe people even. Uh, and it's really good to have you here today. Yeah, thank yeah? you for having me. So I assume you are both excited and a little bit nervous, perhaps. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. Uh, that's natural. But okay, so before getting started with all my questions, because I have a lot of questions, mm-hmm. I think we, of course, need to have a look at your shoes. Uh, my shoes? That you're wearing today. Okay, so look at these bad boys. We got a snake theme snake going on here. Snake Adidas. Snake. Adidas. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So how come these shoes? How come these shoes? Uh, actually, I've been buying sneakers black with white mm-hmm. stripe, like yeah. for like ten years. So I was thinking about uh, parting it up a little bit. Uh, parting up a little bit. Yeah. Um, doing something different. Yeah. So that's good. Yeah, I like them. You're comfortable to walk in. Yeah. Uh, not necessarily, <laughs> no, no. but, <laughs> <laughs> but probably they look good, they look right? Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm gonna tell you a secret, and this is uh, maybe shouldn't as we're gonna broadcast this later on. But I used to be the guy who always wore. Uh, I, w- I would say nice looking, but other people call it ugly leather shoes. You uh-huh. know these very strict like leather shoes that uh, have to suit. Yeah, I would wear them all the time, basically because I was poor. I could only afford two <laughs> pair of shoes, so I had these, uh, even when I was wearing jeans. But eventually, I got so bullied by my girlfriend. Like, you look like an old man. Uh-huh. You're like 25, 30. Yeah. 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 So eventually, I went ahead and bought sneakers. Uh, and uh, I think I'm never going back to any other kind of shoes after having been wearing sneakers. Oh. You can play pingies. You can run if you... Sh- <laughs> There's yeah, anything going on. If you compare them to, to leather, leather shoes. Yeah, I understand you. Yeah. 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 Especially those sweaty summer days. Yeah. Yeah. So enough about shoes. Uh, interesting conversation as it is. <laughs> I think that's not where we want to spend most of our time. Um, so Pierre, um, we're going to talk a little bit today about your journey. Uh, you've been a professional athlete yeah. uh, in hockey for many years. Uh, you're also now running two companies, uh, maybe soon even three of them. Mm, maybe. Um, but so let's let's start. Um, where did you grow up? Um, where are you from? And how did you get into hockey as a sport? Uh, well, I'm born in, in Karlstad, which is the capital city of, of uh, Värmland. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I w- grew up there all my life. Uh, mom and dad, brother, uh, yeah. apartment complex. Mm-hmm. Uh, my, I think it was my dad that introduced me to, to hockey. We had a little rink outside uh, that they used oh, to, nice. to, how do you say, uh, yeah. Pour some water and... and uh, mm, in winter. Yeah. Back uh, when there was actually snow and cold in winter. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so I usually... I, I started skating there when I was two years old. Ah, cool. um, I started playing in a team when I was four. Mm. Uh, and Yeah. And and, and I, I've been doing it since since yeah. then, al- al- almost. So it's like... It's almost like walking for you, I suppose. Yeah. 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 Mm. Yeah. Almost. Because when, when I put myself on a pair of skates, I can't even stand up. I think it's it's amazing when you see professional hockey players or figure skaters, whatever it is, just the control they have on a thin blade of steel <laughs> on ice, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, you, <laughs> it's it's a lot of training behind it, Yeah, if I say that, at the least. Yeah, a lot uh, of for hours. sure. Yeah. Uh, but did your dad play hockey as well, or was he just into skates? Actually, we, I grew up uh, like 500 meters from from uh, the, bi- the the biggest arena in Costa, mm. uh, where F- Fariesta plays, uh, mm. and and we, my dad had a season ticket there, so I always cool. went with him and, yeah. and watched hockey. So, I think that's where my interest uh, mm. came really big because I want I wanted to to be there when I was when I grew up and yeah. uh, I saw uh, all of those great, great hockey players uh, mm. almost every second night. Mm. Uh, so uh, I think that was a big part uh, part for me uh, yeah. gro- growing up to see see that uh, Ferrista team. Yeah, very cool. So there was never uh, any other sport that was you know relevant for you. Was it only hockey? Uh, I played football too. Yeah, like yeah. most guys, they play hockey <laughs> and football, yeah. and then you pursue. And, and then you and then you became fifteen. Yeah, we have Patrick on the sound back here, also <laughs> football and hockey player. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I think uh, for the most hockey players, uh, when you grow up and you come up to like fourteen, fifteen years old, you, yeah, you become too too big for football. Yeah, uh, a little bit too slow. Mm. Uh, so uh, around that time, I I choose hockey. Yeah, yeah. 
Very cool. Um, so you obviously you you played in in, in Karlstad when you when you mm. grew up for the youth team, yeah. I suppose. That's where you had your beginning of your career. Mm. Yes. Um, but what was your first? Uh, was that also your first uh, professional experience of hockey, playing Costa? Where did you go? No, no. Uh, when I was seventeen, so seventeen years old, uh, they decided to to um, to do something different in Costa. They they tried to put the youth team into a professional team in Division One. Mm. Uh, I didn't really think that that was going to work, so I moved to Mora. Mm. That was in Allsvenskan. Um, that's where I had my first uh, professional experience yeah. as an 18 year old. Um, yeah, and, and yeah. That, that's the start of the, the career in yeah. professional hockey, I would say. But is it like, uh, so do you have any choice where you end up, or is it mostly, you know, this club will take me based on my skills? So can you actually have some say in it? Yes, you can, of course, but uh, in, in that case, I, I had that coach, uh, right. Thomas Montaigne, that's actually the... Shout out to Thomas. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> actually the coach for the under-20 national team, Oh, uh, Thomas Montaigne. Oh, okay. So uh, uh, I had him in Färjestad in my last year, and yeah. he went back to Mora, where he came from, and he took uh, took me with him. Yeah. So... Yeah. That's really cool. So you maybe also, to a large degree, um, followed him, right? Because you, you saw that you could learn from him yeah. as a coach. Yeah. That's really cool. Um, okay, so you started playing in Mora. Um, but I know uh, that you also played professionally in both uh, Ferdona, team of Gatlinburg, and also, uh, is it Lulio? Yes. Cool. Um, so, so what is the step to, when would you say that you went pro? I mean, you obviously went... You started your professional career going to Mora. When are you professional in hockey? Like, do you is it when you can live off just playing hockey, or what would you say? Uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> I don't have any good answer to that. But I, 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 I think I've always been a professional in my sport because mm. that's the only thing I've been doing. Yeah. But uh, of course, when you make money and can live of it, then you can pay your bills from it. Yeah. Uh, it, it becomes more real, but. I haven't even thought about it uh, that mm. way actually until I quit. Uh, mm. Maybe you start to, oh, and that happened. And, uh, that, so that, I was that a pay- professional. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> I, I, I think I was it all the time, but uh, then all of a sudden the paychecks came in and uh, <laughs> right, you yeah, can yeah. do a little bit more fun things with the, with the money. But yeah. I didn't see it that way actually. Mm. That's interesting. I mean, and also then, why. Um, did, was there a certain reason why you chose those clubs, uh, Luleå and Ferlunda? Was it for development? Was it, you know, opportunities? I think I think the first step from Ferdinand Statemura was was obviously the the coach mm-hmm. uh, that that called me in the summer and asked me if I wanted to come there. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was the same actually the same uh, reason why I went from Mora to to Luleå. Uh, the coach in Ferlunda right now, Roger Rumbari, mm-hmm. I had him in a in a national youth. Uh, uh, camp in the summer all oh, right yeah uh, one summer when i was a little bit younger uh so when i when i didn't have a contract in mora mm. uh, roger called me and he asked me if i wanted to come to lulio mm. so uh yeah that was the same step and then from lulio to, to frona it was a little bit different but uh, mm. yeah i wanted to come come a little bit closer to my to my relatives and, mm. and my hometown actually and i wanted to play in a bigger arena, so, yeah, so to yeah. say, uh, and I think that Frona was a good choice yeah, at definitely. the time. Yeah, and and I think is uh, we just touched upon it, but it's interesting how much the coach, uh, the role he seems to play mm. in attracting players, in bringing good players with him. You would assume that it's mostly you know you have a certain amount or you have a certain level of skill in certain areas, and clubs look for that skill. But here you're also talking about a coach maybe seeing a promise in a mm-hmm. player, and actually bringing those players with him. I think I think that's that's been the case for me that yeah. I have a, a, had a really good contact with the coach. Nowadays, I think you have more of a reputation as as a as a as a club that mm. you develop players and you have those kind of skills. 
you don't have to certainly know the the coach but, but you know that the the club stands for that and, and mm. I, if i take an example Frölunda has a really good reputation i think in in the whole world yeah uh, especially in europe that that you come here and you 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 work really hard and you develop as a hockey player and then you go to the next level maybe nhl mm. or a higher league khl and so to speak so i think it's a little bit different nowadays but uh, okay. i understand what you mean yeah that's really interesting and what was nhl ever an option for you or how, how hard is it really to to get is it a is it even an option for most players or does it demand extreme levels of I I would say if you if you told a ten year old guy how hard it is to come to NHL, he would probably quit hockey. Really? Because that's yeah. that's what they dream of and that's what they should dream of. But yeah, yeah. but but the percentage of coming there is it's so low it's not even Yeah. It's not even yeah. And, and this is despite, you know, uh, the Swedish hockey league being quite good if in your uh, international yeah, perspective yeah. and you have the Finnish league, you have Russian league, but so NHL is just a different ball game then. It is a different ball game for, yeah. for, for sure. And and I think it's a lot of yeah, it it depends on which which club do you get drafted of. Is is that is that a bad team? Uh, or is it a really really good team? Maybe mm. you have one spot each every second year to to take. Yeah. In a bad team, you you know they they want to uh, younger up their team uh, roster and, and so to speak. So so it's mm. it's a lot of uh, yeah wh- where you get drafted actually. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Really interesting. Um, I think this can be a bit hard to uh, to answer yourself, I suppose, because it might sound a bit presumptuous, but. It's interesting. We have we have Patrick on the sound here, and he said right before this interview was going to start that I've heard you were quite uh, popular among the fans. What what does it mean to be popular among the fans for me who doesn't perhaps understand it, or why were you then maybe a popular <laughs> yeah, player? I don't know if, it was if you were. Uh, yeah. <laughs> maybe you were not. We will see. Uh, I think I think I have that kind of style to play hockey that most of the the audience want to see. Yeah. I believe that hockey is a is a working class hero sport, so mm-hmm. to speak. Uh, Interesting. Uh, yeah. I think that developed also d- during the time I played. But at, at the time I played, I think the audience is a little bit tougher. They mm. they they usually work as a construction builder or yeah, uh, t- tougher works. And I think my kind of style, uh, like blocking mm. shots and. Uh, yeah, what wanting, wanting to hit people and so it was a, you had a, maybe a, a physical and yeah. a, a passion driven play, right? Absolutely, yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay, that's interesting. So, and you also talked about it before, but so do you think that hockey, not only how it's perceived, but actually how it's played, how it's you know how you train uh, young people, has it changed now in recent years? Oh yeah, oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> in in so many different ways, we, we mm. could talk hours for it. But uh, in, in my first professional years, we, I didn't I didn't talk to the coaches that much. No. Uh, nowadays, after each game, you get a video of yourself and you mm. you go through it with the coach and you see different sequences in the game. Yeah. And yeah. So it's it's not a ball game right now. And and the the younger guys who comes up right now, they are demanding it mm. because they want to see themselves and they yeah. want to develop and they want to see different situations. Uh, I never I I don't think I ever saw myself in a video no. after, after one game my whole career. So. Right. So it's yeah. not only that technology allows it, but it's actually it has changed what you expect as a oh, player. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. And nowadays you don't talk, you don't talk that much about blocking shots or mm. playing physical. Nowadays you talk about skills and scoring. And, yeah, right. Uh, yeah. So, so a lot of things have changed. Do you think that has taken hockey to a new level? Uh, I mean, the, you say that you focus more on the technical aspects, mm. not maybe as so much um, physical. Is maybe the wrong word, but it's maybe mm. not so much. Um, about uh, causing damage to the other players, mm, yeah. <laughs> if yeah, I may yeah, put it like that. Yeah, yeah, but sure. do you think that has developed hockey as a sport? I think so, and I think that was necessary because the the game has changed a lot in speed. Yeah, uh, it goes a lot of a lot of a lot of fast. Because every player nowadays are really good physical outside the game. Yeah. So when they step into the arena, they can they can use that in a much more better ways than we could mm-hmm. uh, in, in the old days. We had one gym mm. session a week yeah. now, nowadays is six or seven or eight times a week yeah so the players are, are better trained nowadays mm. and, and and 
that has caused the game to get a lot faster mm. and it you have to have better better skills to to yeah. to play and i think that's that's really interesting because uh one thing we were going to talk about today is the, one of your startups that mm -hmm. you're running yeah which is called heads up yeah and you're talking about the fact that hockey has gone from at least in your perception and this very physical sport uh, very much focus on you know whatever it was back in mm, the day yeah. um but now it's become more technical it's more about the speed <clears throat> uh player skills basically so Talk a little bit about heads up. Is this then from your own experience that the hockey needed this kind of product? I think nowadays the players aren't used to get hit. Mm. So what they do, they 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 go, they skate a lot a lot of faster, and uh, they they just go and and don't see the the consequences of of them mm. going. And of course, it's it's a physical game still. Yeah. yeah. But but nowadays it's more you bump into each other or it's not uh, mm. meant to be or so to speak so mm. what i saw <clears throat> it's a it's a great it's a it's a big debate in sweden right now mm. of hockey going down uh the numbers are decreasing and of players uh, yeah. of players mm. yeah and uh, a lot of uh concussions yeah and I wa when i was a coach i could see those players who didn't get any damage or <clears throat> was never injured mm. uh, they had a they had a vision that they always could handle the puck without looking at it mm. so Rasmus Dali and Lucas Raymond and a lot of a lot of other guys uh, they are never injured mm. because they see where the threat is coming from when yeah. they have the puck they don't have to look at it because the guys who looks at it, they can't see where the threats are coming from, mm. or see where the goal is in 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 the net, or where yeah. where you can pass the puck, or what happens around them. Yeah, and that's the guys who who gets injured. Yeah, so that's that's the basically basically the the idea of heads up uh, mm. is to to don't see the puck when you handle it, mm. and and from a younger age learn yeah. that from the start. So it's uh it's like a. I'm not gonna call it a mouth guard, but it's a it's a guard that you put on the bottom of your helmet, exactly. on the visor. I think you call it right. Uh, cage. Cage. All yeah. right. I learned something today. <laughs> um, and it's it's really meant to be used when training, right? Especially to yeah. uh, to force players to up their gaze. Yes. Uh, therefore, heads up. Mm -hmm. And not only will it make them more technical, better players, but it would actually then decrease injuries. Yeah, that that's our that's our vision for this product. Our yeah. mission our mission is to to create better players that are more skillful. Yeah. Uh, our vision in the long long game is to to decrease the the head injuries mm -hmm. in sport. Uh, so how it works? It's a t two level. Show it to the camera so you can see it. Yeah. It's a two level. Two level. Yeah. Uh, you fix this to your cage. So that when you when you handle the puck, your brain te brain tells you, "Hey, don't look down," because it won't you, help you. Anyway. No, it won't help you <laughs> because you won't see anything. No, so no. look up instead. So that's yeah. what this does. And when you when you feel uh, comfortable with this one and train uh, for a couple of years with it, mm. you harden it up, makes it a lot tougher. Mm. This will decrease it uh, even even more. Yeah, so I think it's also really, really slick, cool looking. Yeah, um, I think you've done a great job there, and it's uh, so basically now we are building the uh, the e-commerce site together for this brand. Yes. You're gonna go live now in just a couple of weeks, mm -hmm. um, and we're gonna market uh, this product and hopefully help a lot of players, both technically and also injury wise. I really think so, and I think that the Swedish market has really, or the the whole market in in the world has has. Uh, Waited for for a product that that could help players. Yeah. Uh, so it will be interesting. Uh, really yeah. Yeah. Cool. And uh, just uh, before we, uh, I have uh, so many questions, uh, but it was so natural, I think, to also talk about this topic once you mentioned mm -hmm. that hockey has changed. Yeah. It gives me the background to sort of how you came up with this product. And we're going to talk a little bit more later on, you know, you as an entrepreneur, how did you go into that from being a professional athlete? Mm. But before we leave hockey, um, you know, give us the weirdest thing you've experienced playing hockey. <laughs> as, a, as a professional yeah. athlete, uh, from fans, from playing the game, the people involved. 
Can you share some? I had I had a uh, <laughs> yeah, I had something. Uh, yeah, it happens. Uh, it happened in more actually. Um, mm. We were playing uh, HV71. Mm. Uh, I will, I will, I saw in uh, in the on the side uh, that I was gonna get hit. Mm. So I I went up to the glass and was ready to take the hit. And the guy hit me a little bit uh, lower, so I I fell down <laughs> on almost on my back, but. Yeah, I was gonna land on my ass, mm. but the thing was that he he also fell down uh, at the same time, mm. and I I I sat on his skate, so I it hurt, it hurt my ass. Uh, so I came into the bench <laughs> and I I asked uh, the doctor, hey, can can you just have a check on my uh, yeah my ass? <laughs> <laughs> so so he put his finger n- not in the middle but on the side. <laughs> <laughs> That's an important detail, right? <laughs> yeah. And he was on the on the left side, and I, no, 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 feel the right side, and and, and he <laughs> came you, up. You had a he, moment there. Yeah, right? I, I, had, I had. And he came up, and he, uh, his whole hand was bloody. Oh shit! Uh, so uh, I sat down in his gate, and it cutted my right. Uh, how do you say cheek? No, no, yeah, no, cheek, butt cheek, cheek yeah. butt cheek. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I had to. I had forty stitches in in the forty. Forty. Stitches. Yeah. Yeah. I have, a picture. I have a picture on it. And you were probably so uh, jacked up on adrenaline mm. that you yeah. didn't really feel no, until you no, know I, I something. Feel, I felt a little sting ass. back there. Yeah. Oh, something happened. Now, so. yeah. yeah. I hope this was uh, caught on TV cameras. So oh, the whole world could see your. The doctor actually t- took a picture before he stitched me up. <laughs> <laughs> for your so, reference or for. I don't know. They, they sent had, it to the newspaper. They had a good laugh at it in the newspaper. Oh it was God. in Aftenbladet, I think, the, the day after. From your misery. Yeah, yeah from good. my misery. Yeah. Aftenbladet, oh, what's fun. up with that? Come uh, on. Okay, that's a, that's a good story. <laughs> I think that's... Uh, mm-hmm. I love him um, just feeding up your buttocks and finding a lot of blood. That's, <laughs> that's both um, interesting and macabre, I think, yes. It is. Good story, though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> um, so, uh, I think that's really interesting. Uh, you You talked about your hockey career. Super interesting, and also the product now. And um, on that topic, because obviously you are uh, right now running two companies, as I mm-hmm. mentioned, almost free. Um, we'll see in a couple of weeks. <laughs> Teaser what that could be. But you also have uh, developed a brand of should you call it food or snack products? Uh, we have uh, on the side here. It's uh, plant based food. So yeah. yeah, but we also have snack. On the <laughs> okay, so <laughs> it's so both, both, both good. <laughs> and wh- what what are they like? What is this? Actually, this idea started when when I was playing. Yeah, uh, I came up in the mornings and I wanted a quick uh, quick breakfast mm. uh, that is healthy and I, that I could bring in the car because yeah. it's stressful. Not a lot of time. Uh, no. Kids also. L- late night, kids. Yeah. Uh, early mornings. Um, so what I w- what I w- what I would do was to to mix it up in a blender, mm. and uh, take with me in the car and drink. Uh, the thing is that I, I left the kitchen a mess, <laughs> so my wife was yeah. I got a phone call and yeah. You basically started this company to save the marriage, right? <laughs> <laughs> Almost. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> awesome. Uh, the thing is that you don't have a, always have the products at home that you no, can mix it no. up and and, and it, it takes time right? and it leaves and a lot of dishes yeah. time um, then when you when you get kids when they come home from home from school or w- when they're going in the mornings mm. uh, they're gonna go for practices or stuff yeah. you you want to give them something healthy and quick on the go right and yeah. uh, what's in the stores right now is it's <clears throat> a lot of things are uh, milk. Uh, based mm, mm. i i have a lactose intolerance myself right, so yeah. i needed to do a product that was not uh, based on milk yeah uh, and also i wanted all natural ingredients yeah but i wanted to be like when i was told the producer i wanted a, a product that, that was going to be similar to a bowl of porridge and two mm. eggs uh, as as the so that's what it is actually yeah it's a, it's a it's like a Sturdy breakfast to it's, get yeah, going. Or, or a snack uh, yeah. du- during the day when you mm. don't have the time. Uh, all natural ingredients, no no sugar, alcohols or something like that. So, but but isn't uh, starting a I would call it a food brand now. Isn't starting a food brand probably one of the toughest thing you can do, right? Mm. There's so <laughs> much uh, I suppose yeah. rules for what you mm. can and cannot do. It is, uh, and uh, I think I heard it like. A hundred times, don't don't start it. 
No. No, because it is the toughest market to go into. Yeah. It's the grocery stores. And, but I know. But now you're actually selling these bags, right? Yeah, yeah, we are. We yeah. are, and, and it goes good. Yeah? Yeah, That's really interesting. And yeah. I've actually tried, I think, the, the chocolate one mm. and, and maybe one more. Mm. I think the one thing that is, is crucial, I think, for, for people who will pick this up is mm. the taste. Mm. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, I want a healthy snack of food. Mm. Uh, but some of these uh, very healthy uh, liquids or whatever you should mm. call it, beverages, they taste pretty funny, mm. I would say. Yeah, they do. Yeah. They do. And, and it, it's almost impossible to have something uh, good, uh, <laughs> good, yeah. uh, tasteful, nutritious. Uh, yeah. It's hard. How long did it take you to reach uh, this particular level batch uh, ingredients whatever we should call it but to to get here how long have you uh, i would say one one and a half year almost we yeah, had which yeah is a long time right it is a long time and yeah. a, a lot of testing a lot of uh, products going up and down the factory uh, yeah it, it actually ended up with me and the producer who made this recipe going mm. down to the factory. Yeah. Uh, so so they can line up like fifty <laughs> testing. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah do, you just had a, a good bit. day. Yeah, 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 it was. It was. <laughs> <laughs> uh, cool. So uh, it it it's taken a lot of time, but I yeah. think that the team around it also made it possible. Yeah. As in the head sub product, uh, I think the yeah. teams around the both products, and, and I think. You were involved in this one, and uh, I, I think that's one thing I learned from hockey. You, you, yeah. I, I was a defensive uh, uh, guy that blocked shots and hit people, but I, <laughs> I also understand that you need a guy who scores. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And you need a, go a guy who is good in passing, and you yeah. need a good goalie. And so I tried to really build build up a team around yeah. the two products because I, I can't I can't do it all for no. sure I think that's so interesting because I, I had a question what you've um, taken away from professional sports into running a startup mm. so that's really interesting I've been I've been fortunate enough to meet uh, the teams and uh, the team at heads up really great guys um, I know that your wife is doing a hell of a job of mm. uh, marketing and selling the redo yeah. product um, so is that the the most crucial aspect that you take with you from from professional sports into startup running a startup? Is it you know building a team where you can rely on each other? For sure, yeah. uh, and I would say that one thing I also have taken with me is that you need you need to separate the the, the business from from the personal uh, mm -hmm. level because if I say something to you, David. Uh, as you working on we app mm. hey you need to do this better and you need to do this yeah that's that's business but i i still yeah. i still love you as a person yeah so you need to separate those things yeah uh, those two th and i think that's very crucial when you when you work with uh, right people that's really close so uh, you go into a meeting you have the tough love you you say what is wrong yeah. you solve it but then you go out for the meeting and you know happy faces let's for just sure yeah. yeah for sure I think that's that's really good. Uh, I definitely agree with that one. Um, I think the I, I know a, a guy who ran a very big um, food company. Uh, they sold uh, you know food goods as well. Um, built a huge company, uh, several hundred million. And he said the worst thing is that when people don't complain about the food, that's the worst thing I know mm. because I can't make it better. No, exactly. So that that's really what we're talking about. Yeah, and I, I think. I learned that as well when when I was a coach. Uh, <laughs> if if the players would would uh, how to say, uh, I told the players almost each week that they did something wrong, yeah. and, and if they would have listened only to that, they would think that I I was the worst coach ever. Mm. Uh, and uh, I I often told them. You need to separate those things because I love yeah. you guys, but I think that thing you did there that's not good. Yeah, yeah. So I think over the years we we had a good uh, communication there with the players, and I yeah. think they really bought into that uh, kind of way of thinking. Interesting. Yeah. And, and you just bring that then to running a startup. Yeah, I man. I, I almost. I I don't. I don't think that's diff so many different ways to running mm. a company. You know, it's a lot of economical part and, and yeah, stuff. Yeah. Uh, that I'm not used to, but yeah. I'm. I think I'm a little bit used to running a team and uh, listen to people and uh, 
knowing that this guy needs this uh, communication and this girl yeah. needs this communication. So I, I think I'm a little bit good at that yeah. part. And is that, if you think about your biggest strengths, um, you know, you working in these startups, is it then taking the the coaching role or what, what would you say is your biggest strength when it comes to running these companies? What, what, what role do you play in these companies? I don't really know. <laughs> <laughs> Are you the jack of all trades, master? I, I think, uh, I think uh, in 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 this redo company, I, I think uh, I'm the, I'm the, like the spider of the web. Yeah, uh, Just keeping people connected and yeah, aligned. Yeah, yeah, and I and I don't think that's gonna be my role in in the end. But mm. uh, I like to I like to talk to. Um, I want to be the guy who talks to a lot of. Uh, maybe I'm a thrill that we just uh, signed a deal with them. Yeah. And, uh, we're talking to uh, IFK, and uh, I want to be the guy that's uh, networking around a little bit and, yeah. and talking to maybe big sponsors and, and yeah. this sort of stuff. But right now in this company, yes, in Heads Up, we have a little bit more structure, maybe mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. project manager and uh, economic part. and, and Which is interesting because it also shows that no startup is going to be the same as another, <laughs> right? No. You can't just copy what works in one startup no. to the next. Because no. we had an interesting conversation, me, me and Patrick, uh, you know, just trying out this format. The first time I interviewed Patrick, we talked about, you know, first we gave certain advice in the beginning of the podcast. And then we realized, you know, we actually have to give extremely contradictory advice. <laughs> uh, because if you talk about this context, yeah. uh, it's just very different. Yeah. Um, so maybe that's something we can learn from this. Yeah. Uh, Pierre, is, I, I need, you know, I'm going to ask you one final question because you seem to be a man who have, um, as we say in Sweden, a lot of irons in the fire, right? <laughs> <laughs> right? You're laughing because you, you recognize this. Uh, this is, yeah. Yeah. What is, what is uh, apart from making these two brands into huge uh, international uh, successes, what is the next thing for Pierre? <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Um I actually running in another company, uh, a hockey camp cup company with, with, with a friend of mine that's mm -hmm. um, hockey PT uh, with a guy named Andreas uh, who has built up his his own brand for for many 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 years. That, yeah. Shout that, out to Andreas. Yeah, that I'm a part of right now. <laughs> uh, so so right now I have a lot of things going on, but. Yeah, maybe I have something else in, yeah. in the pipe. <laughs> maybe uh, I think uh, you're the kind of guy who's gonna you're gonna die on the you know elderly care uh, house or whatever you could your retirement home. You know, running seven or ten startups from there. Yeah, but ra rather that than than uh, being like, oh, I should have done that or I should have done that. Uh, wow, I agree. So, yeah, yeah, so one hundred percent. Yeah. Pierre, this was uh, a blast. I'm I'm super excited both that we actually got this to happen. Yeah. Uh, getting to talk about you and your your amazing uh, companies. Um, having Patrick, thanks a million. We have Patrick behind the camera. We had a lot of technical uh, hiccups. <laughs> I think eventually we will see. I think we managed to to get this rolling. So thanks for coming. It's been a blast. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Corona. Agreed. Corona. <laughs> You know, corona, we'll, corona. We'll, we'll edit this out. No <laughs> cool. Thanks. Thank you.